Hi there. <clears throat> I'm Vita from Rooted Arts. Thank you for joining me for today's video on massaging the back. Now the first thing that you want to think about when you have someone face down is the same thing that I talked about in, as a first step for when you have someone face up. Alignment, right? You want to notice imbalances or differences in the body. Um, for example, I can see looking at Eric's hips here that his right hip is just a little further up which means that he's got a, he's got a slight hip imbalance. Um, our backs, right? They're, they're one part of our core and they often get overextended because they're stretched too far for anyone sitting at a desk or doing anything like that. Um, this particular hip imbalance, because one is raised towards me, suggests that he crosses his left leg over his right, right? So that his left hip is brought forward. And so I can think about that and the repercussions of that throughout the back. You also wanna check and see if the feet are even. You know, think about those bony protrusions that we've talked about on the side of the hip, you have some. And if you can't see them easily, you can palpate or touch them, you can feel them and feel what's higher, what's lower. Um, here I see that his left hip is actually a little higher uh, and that goes along with that cross leg posture that I discussed and it suggests that his, his lower left back is likely to be a little tight. Now, if you think about the posture, what's getting compress compressed or shortened or actually those muscles in the front while the left is stretching to go over the right, likely. Um, however, just rebalancing the back and getting some soothing in there is gonna help that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to go, after doing the alignment assessment, is to go to his feet. And I have a bolster, and you can use a pillow at home, uh, under his ankles to just support the natural curves of the body. Um, otherwise, there would be a lot of pressure on the knees and it would kind of force them into hyperextension. So I'm gonna lift up his ankles and just pull a little bit towards me. As always, I'm staying nice and gentle and I'm just shifting to the left and to the right. And this encourages his low back to start releasing and his body to go into a nice gentle alignment. And then I'm just gonna push out and up towards Eric's head on his feet to just kind of support the alignment that I wanna see. And again, a lot of this, you know, when we're moving in gentle range, it's just bringing the body's attention to things that can change, that could support comfort. And, and our bodies respond to that kind of stuff, which is beautiful. Our bodies are so amazing. So now when I look at his hips again, I can see that they're already a little bit more balanced, which is great. Now I wanna check in with his shoulders for that same type of alignment. And while I'm doing this, I can just touch, right? So again, as long as we're touching in a loving, supported, attention, and uh, relaxed way, it's already gonna feel good and like, the body is getting attention and relaxation that it wants. <clears throat> so I'm going to fold the blanket down and then right at the, at this join between the hip and our glutes, our gluteal area, um, is our sacrum, right? And that is right about your tailbone and you can kind of feel it you can feel around for it it's just at the bottom of the back here so what we're going to do and we don't want to put pressure directly on the spine ever right because it's full of those bony protrusions and we will work in the spine a little bit later um in the lamina groove which is the 
the hollow uh, where the the spine um, <laughs> dips or creates channels as the as the as this as the cervical processes line up. Um, I'm just laughing because my brain is gapping. So, so when we're going back into the sacrum, um, you can often feel what feels kind of like gel filled bumps in this area. And that is um, hyperextension can cause our lymphatic fluid to bubble instead of circulating the way that you want. And it, and then the, that fluid can get hard. And, and so when you go into that area, just creating a little bit of pressure down towards uh, your client's feet is gonna, it's gonna just encourage that area to open up. And you know, again, I'm doing gentle pressure. On the back, most people tolerate a bit more so it might feel like you're exerting yourself more, but you still want to stay in that three to four range where it's just easy for the body to relax and release. So I just held it and released a few times. So hold, and it's a gentle hold. My fingers are slipping down as the body is releasing. And then slow release, right? You know, thinking about that fascia, that connective tissue, you don't want to do anything really fast because it'll just spring back like a rubber, like a rubber band. You want to make sure if your person has longer hair to get it out of the way because once you start working on the back with oil, um, it can just get sticky or oily, and there's not any really reason to do that. So I'm just pulling the sheets back. And to add security, I like to just tuck. I mean, this is proper draping uh, if you were going to be working professionally. But it also just feels nice. It adds a layer of security that helps diminish any tension that can be created from someone standing over you. Even when it's someone you, that you love, it does like create a power dynamic and and this kind of just adds to the safety and security of the person on the table so i'm going to take a little bit of oil i'm just going to start to warm up the back and i'm just really spreading the oil and making sure that it's going to be everywhere that i want it to be as i work on the back and i'm doing that with long gliding effleurage strokes and when I get up to uh, the base of the skull in this occipital area, I'm just gonna hold it because it feels nice and there's a lot of attachments up there. So I'm doing long gliding strokes, nice affleurage up into a hold here. And then I'm gonna repeat it. Long gliding strokes up into a hold. And now, remember I talked about the spine earlier. So this is a great time to just kind of notice whether the spine looks straight, um, if it's kind of curving. And you can see there's an indentation down the middle where we see the spine is. And you can see how straight it is, whether it's curving, whether one side of the back is higher than the other. Um, and that can give you a lot of information. So these gliding strokes to apply your lotion or oil can really be informative. And it already feels good to be doing the affleurage. Right, Eric? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in with uh, a thumb glide. And I'm, what I'm doing is you can feel very gently the tip of the um, of the vertebrae. <laughs> there we go. Uh, as they line up and to create our spine, and and just feeling them kind of informs you of this channel that exists on either side of the processes. 
right? You've all seen vertebrae, vertebrae before, and, and you know that there's a point that comes up, and then on either side it dips back and goes around, right? So you can feel where that is, and then gently you can take your thumbs and put them on either side of the spinous process on the vertebrae and just glide down in that lamina groove, that channel on either side of those spinous processes, those bony parts that just stick out to the surface. And you don't wanna to go too far out because then you'll meet the outer edge and it's just not gonna feel good <laughs> if you go down them and, and it's not gonna really be helpful. <laughs> So you want to stay in that lamina groove, stay in that channel where you feel that dip. And like I talked about in my foot video last week, right, um, you want to do every move at least three times. Right? The first time that we do a technique, it's an introduction to the body. The second time, it's a confirmation. And the third time is where the body really gets to relax. So we want to do it at least three times. And you can always do it more. Now, what's great about this is that I can see... Uh, the circulation increasing for the areas that weren't getting enough blood flow before they're turning a little red and the spine is getting straighter where I see it on the skin it just it looks like it's already straightening itself out right because again our bodies are amazing so as I do this I'm going down on either side I'm probably in about a three or four intensity right about a three. About a three. Um, and then I'm coming up on the outside. I'm just kind of squeezing as I reach the bottom of his scapula. And now I'm going to turn that into just some nice circles following the edge of his scapula to just help the muscles around his shoulder blades loosen up. And I'm going to take that double thumb, right, of both of my thumbs are going at once, and trace the inner border of his scapula or shoulder blade area to help that release as well. And I'm going to take that technique down, and I'm just using my palms to create some nice compression. And then I'm going to do some nice thumb circles around the low part of his back and still grabbing on my way back up. And now I'm going to think about this disparity that I see, right? His hips have already dropped a little bit and started to even out. I'm just going to encourage that motion by pulling up on the side that's lower. And every time that I go over where the spine is, I'm lifting my hands so that there's no pressure, even though I'm still maintaining contact. And then I'm creating the pressure again after I'm on the other side. So I can feel some tightness in this hip, so I'm just gonna lift that specifically. And at the same time, I'm gonna press down on the other hip with the heel of my hand, just creating a nice glide and contact because any point of contact is an opportunity for work and improvement. Still staying conscious of my posture and comfort level that's really, again, going to help me help Eric. And now I'm going in with some glides <clears throat> at the top of his shoulder blade 
where uh, like the topmost innermost right so medial and caudal uh, toward the head is caudal and medial is towards the middle right so I'm going over this medial caudal corner of the shoulder blade where you'll often find clicking uh, as some of our neck muscles come down and create those that block in the lymphatic circulation that I talked about before and that circul that lymphatic fluid can get a little blocked in there, can get calcified and create that clicking. And I'm just gliding over it with my thumbs, doing one at a time and also both at once, just to help it release and relax. And again, I'm staying really pretty gentle, even though more firm than I might work somewhere else in the body. And I'm back into doing some open-handed effleurage on the back, checking and looking at what's happening with that spinal alignment, looking at his hips. His low back feels much looser and his shoulders feel much looser. And there's much less difference in the alignment of his back in terms of which side is higher. There is a little bit still working on like in his rib cage area because the imbalance comes up, right? So just think about sitting with a cross leg part posture. And so I'm just gonna again do a gentle pull up to encourage his anterior or front muscles to release and I'm pushing down, not on his shoulder blade, but right under it with the heel of my other hand, allowing my fingers to trace his shoulder blade on the side towards me as I pull up on the other side. And then I'm gonna go back into those long strokes and I'm gonna go back to doing that same thing I was doing at the beginning where I stop at the top and pause and hold. Effleurage or long stroke. And I'm gonna do it one last time. And then I'm gonna close up the back. So those are just some basic moves that you can use to give a really nice back massage to the people uh, in your household and I hope that you find it really helpful and relaxing. I love you. I love me. I love us. I'll see you soon.